Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tomasz Heimowski, and I'm here today to replace Jan, who unfortunately couldn't make it today to their conference. So the talk will be not about serverless in AWS, but rather F Sharp and creating full stack web applications. I'm really happy to be here today uh, again. So last year, I've actually uh, made a similar talk on similar topic. And some of you might recognize the theme. Uh, but this presentation today is a modified version of that one. So hopefully, if you've heard about that previously, that will be a nice rehearsal for you. Uh, I use the Heimowski nickname. And if you want to track my F-Sharp activity, I have a Twitter account and a GitHub account, as well as my website. So starting with full stack web, what I mean by that is basically developing web applications uh, by a single person, both on the server side and on the client side, the JavaScript side, if you like. And let's maybe start with a small survey. If you consider yourself to be a full stack web developer, please raise your hands. Right, and please keep your hands up if you need to use more than one language for that for your job. Yes, so this is pretty much my point. If nowadays it's really common it, that if you need to be a full stack web developer, you need to uh, to know and use more than one language for your job. And today we're gonna see how you can use just a single language for that for that purpose, which is F sharp. And there will be some live coding, and we'll create an application that's called To Do MVC. And uh, who has heard of To Do MVC project previously? Uh, not that many people. So I'll try to uh, briefly explain what it's all about. So To Do MVC is basically an idea to implement an application on the front end side in JavaScript technologies. Uh, so the same functionalities, but uh, same. Uh, same requirements, but completely different technologies. So the idea is here to basically compare different technologies and different implementations, uh, how they look like. So for example, we have Backbone, Angular, uh, React, Vue, etc. Uh, there are also solutions that compile to JavaScript. And uh, as I said, the idea is that the, the requirements and the behavior of the application is exactly the same, but the implementations differ. So it aims to help you choose your framework for the front end. And the application looks like this. So this is basically a to-do list uh, application kind of thing. And uh, I can add a new to-do to that list, mark a to-do as uh, completed or deleted, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to implement a subset of this application today. And we're going to do that in F -sharp. And in addition to the to do MVC project, there's a corresponding project called to do backend, which aims the same purpose, but uh, on the backend side. So this project takes the to do uh, to do list functionality and shows different technologies on the backend side, how you can implement the same set of features using a completely different uh, technologies. And uh, again, we'll be doing the same. So we'll implement the backend also in F Sharp. So uh, we'll create the to do MVC application both on front end and back end. So, F Sharp, please raise your hands if you have ever heard of uh, or maybe used F Sharp. Well, OK, so I didn't expect quite that lot. Maybe that's my influence here, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, so for those of you who have no uh, previous experience with F Sharp, and how many C Sharp developers here? OK, so uh, we probably won't have uh, that much time to go into details about F Sharp. So that's not really the purpose here. Um, so we'll not talk about semantics or uh, syntax of F Sharp. Uh, in some places, I'll try to complain certain uh, uh, compare certain structures between F sharp and C sharp, so maybe that's easier to understand. But uh, in general, let me just briefly 
uh, explain what F# -sharp language is about. So it was born as a Microsoft research project back in the day, and it's uh, been open sourced for a long time. And actually, it's been open sourced even before Microsoft released to uh, GitHub the ASP.NET Core, MB, uh, MS Build, etc. So F# -sharp has been open source even before that. And what I want to emphasize is that it's general purpose programming language. And some people might claim that it's meant only to be used for certain areas or domains, which I believe is not the case. And I want to demonstrate to you today that you're uh, totally able to create standard business applications using F -sharp. It's functional first, which means that uh, functional is the paradigm that's uh, uh, encouraged to use uh, when you write uh, in F -sharp. However, you can still use object-oriented uh, structures if you need to, for example, for performance purpose. It runs on .NET, Mono, uh, .NET Core, and as well as we'll see today uh, in your web browser. And we will be using a thing called SafeStack today for implementing the, uh, the application. And SAFE is basically an acronym for, for different technologies that are common to use when creating uh, the application, as, such as uh, the one that we'll see today. And uh, if you are not that familiar with f -sharp, you probably recognize us Azure from that list. But don't worry, I'll try to go step by step uh, through each of the three remaining ones and explain them in practice. And in the big picture, the safe stack is a web development stack that combines those several open source projects. And what is important is that it's F sharp end to end. So again, you use F sharp on back end and front end. And the acronym really fits nicely into uh, the nature of F sharp language well, because of powerful type system in F sharp, we can say that it's type safe. To start developing uh, applications in SafeStack, you need to have the .NET SDK uh, 2.2 installed. Uh, there's a global .NET tool called Fake, which you need to install. Uh, this tool builds and run your, uh, runs your application. And for the JavaScript part of things, you also need Node.js and a package manager, either Yarn or NPM. And if you're more into the Docker stuff, uh, you can use Visual Studio Code Editor with also an extension called Remote Containers. And then, basically, you can create a Docker, a Docker container where all the prerequisites will be installed for you, so you don't need to install them yourself. And to create a project, you basically use the .NET CLI command uh, with new, uh, .NET new command to create a project and then use the fake global .NET tool to build and run your application. So uh, I've actually done that uh, already. So uh, here I have my Visual Studio Code editor. And in the terminal, I'm already running the script. Uh, this, by the way, this is not uh, the bare bones template, project created from the template. I added a couple of uh, functionalities here so that we have a nice starting point. So if you create your, uh, your, yourself a project, uh, you'll probably have a different uh, set of behaviors here. So let's start uh, decomposing the SAFE acronym letter by letter. And let's start from the first letter, S, which stands for Saturn. And Saturn is basically a web server or framework, if you like, which sits on top of ASP.NET Core and Kestrel. So uh, we get all the benefits of uh, speed of ASP.NET Core stuff, uh, which is pretty cool. But the key thing he here is that you basically write your code in F -sharp for for this uh, web server. And you can think it basically of it as a thin layer on top, on top of uh, ASP.NET Core. And let me now move to my editor and show you how we can implement uh, stuff in, uh, in Saturn on the server side. Where's my cursor? Over here. OK, so. Uh, We'll skip uh, those two modules over here because they're not really important right now. Uh, there's a module for configuration and Azure helper function, which I'll use a little bit later. Uh, but for now, let's just focus on uh, this part over here. And uh, what we have here is a thing called 
uh, web app, which basically contains a set of routes or rules uh, for, your, uh, for your web server. And basically, it's like a declarative way of defining routes uh, for your web application. And here, all we, all we do is say that for get request to slash API slash init URL, uh, we want to use this handler to uh, handle this request. And within the, this handler, that's a, basically a callback function which takes two parameters, uh, next of type HTTP func and context, which is the ASP.NET Core context. And the HTTP func is a function from HTTP context to a task of HTTP context option. So uh, you probably know what task stands for, but uh, let me just uh, quickly sh explain what's the option for. Uh, so in F Sharp, we'll basically use options in place where we want to model that a value is might, might, be, might be there or might be missing. So uh, we rather not use uh, nulls for that purpose because we want to have uh, static type checking of uh, whether a value is there or not. And using that function, it's easy to compose uh, those uh, handlers and those routes uh, so that we can create a bigger, bigger applications. And within the body of this handler, we have a thing called a computation expression. And a computation expression is a, uh, is a feature in F -sharp that allows us, it's extensible, and it allows us, for example, to deal, deal with tasks. So in case of task computation expression, you can think of that as the async await uh, lambda functions in C -sharp. So basically, uh, there's something going on behind the scenes when you uh, call the await keyword. So uh, there are some callbacks uh, subscribed somewhere. But you don't need to worry about uh, that because you just uh, write your code in a sequential way. And pretty much, you can transform that to the task computation expression in, uh, in F -sharp. So basically, what we're doing here is we're creating an instance of a value with uh, 42 and then returning a JSON representation of that object. And this return bank operator, this bank, uh, as we'll see for other keywords, all stands basically for uh, what we have in C Sharp for the await keyword. And if I trigger, if I make a call to this API in it, as you can see, uh, I get in response this value of 42. And what I want now is to implement the basic API uh, for loading to-dos. And uh, for the server side, we'll basically have two, uh, two handlers. So one will be for basically fetching the APIs from the server side as a list. And then we'll have a post uh, request, which uh, will be able to take a list of uh, to-dos and save that to the server. So let me start by defining to-do type. And the to-do type will have a couple of fields. And ID will be of type GUID. Then we'll have description of type string. And then uh, is completed flag of type bool. And this uh, type is an F-sharp re uh, record. Um, and the thing about F-sharp records is that it's basically like a class, but it has some more semantics into that. For example, if I want to create an instance of that, of that type, uh, I need to pass all fields uh, to, to when I want to construct that. I need to pass all fields at once. So I'm not able to create uh, instance of that function with not all fields initiated. So for GUID, let's say that will be new GUID. Uh, then for the description, that will be implement server site using Saturn. And then for the is completed, uh, initially that will be set to false. Uh, so I need to pass all values for all the all, all of the fields, otherwise. Uh, the compiler will complain and will not compile. And uh, in my opinion, that's a huge advantage because we're pretty sure that uh, each of the fields uh, are, is initialized when we, we want to use that object. Next uh, thing is that it's, uh, it, the records uh, in, F -sharp, records in F -sharp are immutable by default. And 
if you want to make something mutable, we need to use a spe special keyword called mutable. And actually, I'll use that one for defining a in-memory database. And it will consist of a single to do for now. So uh, this is a syntax for creating a list in F -sharp, And here I'm creating a, a database value, which is a to-do list. And it's mutable, so which means that I will be able to change its value during the runtime. And let me create a function called load, which will again use task computation expression and just return the contents of the database. And having that in place, I can go and um, implement my get API to this uh, handler. And here, instead of creating the counter, I load the to dos from from the database, and then return them as JSON. And when I save the file, uh, as you can see, uh, the fake script is running the server uh, in a watch mode. So whenever I change the source files, it's been recompiled automatically for me, and I don't need to worry about that. And now when I go to uh, API slash to dos. In response, I get a list with a single uh, sample to do that I created. And now let's see how we can do the same for the post, post uh, handler. And let me copy this guy over here. And right now, I want to use the post method to API to dos. And Instead of loading the to dos from the database, I want to say context bind model async. And here, what's happening is that the HTTP context in ASP.NET Core it basically tra keeps track of the request. So here, I'm taking the payload from the request and try to serialize that to my uh, to do list. And then I'll invoke uh, save to dos uh, and finally return a simple string. And I need to create that save function. So save function will take to dos as a parameter. And uh, basically, it will assign that to dos list to, the, to our database. So thanks to that, we use the immutable keyword. We can use the assignment operator over here. Otherwise, uh, that wouldn't be possible. And I'm just using that in more database here for demonstration. Uh, so yeah. and. Uh, those uh, bank, uh, keyword bank operators over here, they all correspond to what we have uh, in C-Shop with the await uh, keyword. So let me change those, uh, let me save those changes, and let's uh, wait for the application to recompile. And when it's ready, uh, we should be able to uh, send a post request to the slash API slash to this URL uh, with a payload of JSON content type. Uh, with four to-dos, so those to-dos correspond to four different letters of the safe acronym which we want to uh, browse today. Uh, when I click Send Request, as you can see, I get the saved uh, string back, so hopefully uh, it worked. And let's just check when I click Send Request to get API to-dos, I get now back the list of four to-dos. OK, so that was it for uh, demonstrating how uh, developing a web server using f -sharp and Saturn and ASP.NET Core looks like. And now let's proceed to the next letter. And A in safe stands for Azure, which is obviously a cloud provider from Microsoft. Um, the thing here is that it's not basically tied to f -sharp in any specific way. Uh, we have that. Uh, Azure and the acronym because template, the template for safe stack comes with uh, helper functions for uh, Azure as well as an uh, easy deployment option to the uh, Azure App Service. So that's we have that here. And uh, I'll have just a short demo for that uh, because, uh, as I said, it's not really. Uh, it's not really strictly bound to f -sharp, the Azure part here, but let me just uh, demonstrate the concept. And for that part, I'll basically remove the in-memory database, and I have a snippet prepare uh, to load the to-dos from an Azure blob storage. So hopefully, if my 
internet connection is uh, is is good, uh, then I'll be able to fetch that from my Azure account. And basically, okay, so let's check that. If I get API to-dos, okay, it worked. So I get now uh, in a response five uh, to-dos, which is what I had in my uh, Azure blob storage in a, in a single file. And basically, all I'm doing here is uh, I'm using those two helper functions that I had uh, in my a helper module to get raw text from a text blob, so, sorry, from a, from an Azure blob, and then uh, either decode or encode that to the to-do list that I use in my application. So nothing really fancy here, just uh, to demonstrate you that using the uh, safe template, it's quite easy to get started with uh, Azure, and later, if uh, necessary, you can also use the deployment option to, to Azure App Service. Uh, but uh, you can also use uh, different providers, if you like. So the template comes with a couple of options. Uh, thanks to the community engagement, there is an option for deployment to Google Cloud uh, Kubernetes, or you can create a Docker image from, from a safe, uh, safe stack application, which is pretty cool. OK, so let's leave uh, Azure for, uh, for now and move forwards. And now we're moving more to the front end side of things. So the next letter F in SAFE acronym stands for Fable. And this is what makes possible to uh, run web JavaScript applications using F Sharp. And Fable is a project that takes F Sharp source sources and outputs uh, JavaScript. So it's an F Sharp to JavaScript compiler. And uh, let me briefly show you in practice how this looks like. And here I'll move to. First thing, I'll close those two and bring my application side by side to my editor. Right, so on the left-hand side, now I have my editor, and right-hand side is the application running in Google Chrome. And uh, I'll open the ClientFS uh, module in my uh, Visual Studio Code, and this is a standard f -sharp source file. Uh, but the difference is that it doesn't compile to .NET, it compiles to JavaScript. So all this file is basically being compiled to JavaScript. And let me for now skip the most of it and move to the main part here. And that's where we are actually running the application. And as you can see, I have uh, defined a run function, which takes a to-do list and basically bootstraps the application. And for now, I'm explicitly running that with an empty list, so I'm I'm not able to see any, any to-dos in my application. So what I want to, uh, to show you now is how to load the uh, to-dos from my front-end application, uh, sorry, from the back-end to my front-end application. And for that purpose, I create load and run function. And uh, within that function, we'll use, again, a computation expression from F Sharp, but this time it will be not be the task computation expression, but rather a promise computation expression. So as mentioned previously, the computation expression in uh, mechanism in F Sharp is extensible, so we can use it not only for tasks, but for other uh, things as well. And in JavaScript world, basically for the uh, asynchronous uh, calls, you use uh, promises usually. So uh, it's possible using Fable and uh, F sharp to use promise task computation expression the same way as we'll be, we'll be using task computation expression on the on the server side. And here I'll be using the fetch API, which is standard uh, uh, API for browsers to communicate with uh, with backend. And I'll use fetch as function uh, parameterized by to do list from API slash to dos. And then when I have the to-dos in place, I'll call run function with those to-dos. And all I need to do now is to call the load and run and pass it to promise.start. OK, save the source file. And uh, as you can see, the application has been recompiled for me automatically. So the client's, uh, client side is also in a watch mode. Whenever I change the source file, it's being recompiled. Uh, which is uh, really good for uh, for development experience. So uh, 
by the way, this operator over here called pipe operator in F sharp takes what's on the left hand side and applies to whatever we have on the right hand side. So we can think of it like uh, the extension methods in C sharp and the Fluent API. That's kind of similar. And skipping that aside, as you can see, when the application is reloaded, we now are able to display the to dos uh, in our the application. So the four uh, first to dos are already marked as complete, so they are a strike through, and there's one not completed. And currently, in the state of my application, what I can do is just to display those to dos as well as to uh, write something in this text input over here. Click Enter, and that will be appended to the very end of the list. However, that change is uh, only visible currently on the front end, because if I refresh my browser, as you can see, it's gone. So uh, that change has been only uh, in, my, uh, in my front end application. And to fix that, I need to implement saving the uh, to-do list back to the server. So as you remember, we had this uh, post API to-dos function in my, uh, in my uh, web a server which we can use to basically uh, post whole list of the to dos to the back to the server, and we'll use that now. And let me create a function called called save, and it will take to dos as a parameter to do list, and again we'll use the promise computation expression here, and again we'll call the fetch API, but this time I'll use post, and the first type parameter is to-do list, so this is what I'm passing to the to -do, uh, to the post uh, method, and I get back in response a string. So this is the saved uh, bash, uh, saved uh, bank uh, string that I got as a response. And I'll use the API slash to-dos URL, and as a second parameter, uh, the to-do list. And I need to return a unit from that. OK, so I have the save function in place. And uh, when the uh, to-dos change, I need to call that function on uh, as a parameter passing the to-dos. And again, promise.start. I click Save. And now, hopefully, when I add something over here and refresh the browser, the changes are saved in the Azure Blob storage. OK, so uh, that was it for the Fable part. Uh, so I demonstrated how you're able to write f -sharp code, which uh, transpires to JavaScript and runs in your browser. And that's possible thanks to the Fable project. And by the way, uh, because Fable outputs uh, JavaScript, uh, you can even create applications uh, in f -sharp that will target Node.js or Electron uh, or whatever you can imagine, where basically JavaScript uh, is allowed as a runtime language. You can create apps using F -sharp and compile that to JavaScript and run there, which is pretty amazing. And let's move to the last letter for the safe acronym, uh, which is E, and it stands for Elmish. And that's basically a way to build your uh, real-world applications in the uh, Fable world. So Elmish is a library for Fable, and it follows a pattern called model view update, or MVU, uh, which I believe is pretty simple to comprehend, and I'll try to explain that, uh, that pattern right now. And let me just have some water before. And the first basic building block of the MVU pattern is a model, which stands for M in the MVU. And model is basically the whole state of your application in the, on the client side. And here we have the same to-do type that we defined on the server side. And then the model is basically a to-do list. And also, we keep track of what's, in, uh, what's within this uh, text, put, uh, text input. So whenever I change the value of that text input, that uh, value in the model will be different. And uh, when I load the application, it's initially empty, as you can see. So this is what the init function stands for. I initially set the input value to an empty string. Then the next building block is called a message. And a message is basically everything that can happen on the client side. And in this case, we can either update the input. So whenever I type some, something here, on every keystroke, this message is being triggered. 
uh, with a value of the new uh, with new value from the text input. And when I click Enter, I trigger the add message, which basically appends that to do to the uh, to the very end of the list. And uh, when I trigger those messages, I need some kind of a handler which will consume those messages and update the model. And that's where this update functions comes, uh, function comes in. And this is the update from the MVU, so the last letter of the pattern. And all it does is basically it takes current state, current model as a parameter, and then next incoming message. And b basically, we take a look what the message is and compute next state in our application. Uh, so the return type is, again, model. And we use a technique called pattern matching in f uh, on the message and check whether it's update input or add message. And if it's update input, we basically just want, we want to preserve the list of to-dos, but change the uh, input field of the model. Uh, so this is the syntax for returning the same value, but with just a single field uh, amended. And in case of add, I need to create an instance of a new to-do. So for the description, I'll take the value from the model input. Initially, it, initially it will be set to false, and I generate a new ID for, for that to-do. And I'll append that to the end of the to-dos list. And when I click Enter, as you see, uh, the input gets emptied as well. So uh, we use an empty, empty string here. Then I have uh, some helper function to detect whether the key I pressed, just pressed was an, actually an Enter key. That's helpful for uh, triggering the add message. And finally, we have our view part. So uh, view stands for the V letter in MVU pattern. And here we're actually using uh, React.js under the hood. And uh, that's because it fits really nicely into this, uh, into this pattern and uh, works really well and integrates really well with uh, Fable and Elmish applications. And for the view, we have a function called view input. And all the view functions will take our model and somehow try to present that. Uh, because this, uh, using React, we have this declarative way of defining our views. It also takes a dispatch function, which allows us to dispatch those messages from within this uh, view definition. So the view input is responsible for rendering this text input over here. As you can see, uh, there's a placeholder. It's probably you might not be able to see that very well here. Uh, but it says what needs to be done. And that's the placeholder that comes from this placeholder property over here. So if it's empty, it will display this placeholder. And we bind to our model. So for the value, we use the model input field. And then we subscribe to two uh, events. So for on enter event, this is when I click enter, uh, we uh, dispatch the add message. And on change event, we uh, dispatch the update input message. So that's how we make the binding between our model and the view. Uh, then the next function called view to do takes, takes a single to do and uh, is responsible for rendering that single to do in this list. So, for example, this make a recap. Uh, this is what the outcome of the view to do function. And as you can see, uh, it uses a certain CSS class from the CSS uh, definition based on whether the uh, to do is completed or not. So, if it's completed, it will be strike through. Uh, so that's how we can uh, work uh, with those properties. And then I have view to do's function, which basically uh, is responsible for rendering all of the to do's as a list. And finally, I have a wrapper called view, which takes all of those and uh, creates a whole view for our application. So having those uh, building blocks in place, the init function, the update function, and view function, uh, also, I have this uh, update and save uh, helper function, which uh, saves those uh, to-dos to the backend. But having those three functions in place, I can create an Elmish program. And uh, basically, that's it. And uh, to show you in practice how adding new features looks like, uh, let's, uh, let's add a new feature that, uh, that allows us to mark a to-do as completed. And I, it's my preference, but I like to start with the view itself. And what I'll do is to add a new input just before the label for, the, for, the, for a to-do. 
And as you can see, uh, there's a new text input that appeared just before uh, the label. And it's of text type, which is not really what I want, so I'll change the property of type to a checkbox instead. And now we get a nice checkbox over here, uh, but it doesn't look really, uh, really fancy, so let's use a CSS definition from, from that we fetched from the to do MVC project. And there's a class called toggle, uh, which makes the checkbox look, like, look much nicer. Uh, but it's, we still have no binding between our view and model. And to change that, we can use a checked property, uh, which is responsible for marking whether a checkbox is true or uh, is uh, checked or not. And if we hard code that to true, as you can see, all of the checkboxes are now marked, uh, which is obviously uh, not the case that we want to have. And instead of using hard coded true, I'll instead pass to do is completed. So whenever a to-do is completed, it will, it will be marked as checked. Uh, but still, we're missing one feature, because uh, whenever I uh, change anything here with the checkboxes, as you can see, it's n the changes are not propagated, because uh, still the model hasn't been updated. So what I need to do now is to subscribe to onChange event. And within that uh, handler, I'll call toggle message with to-do ID and pass it to our dispatch function. So what's happening over here is that I, uh, the toggle message that I uh, still need to create, I will carry on the ID of a to-do, and then we'll dispatch that message so that we can uh, update our model. So let me move now to the messages and add a new, uh, new option over here, which will be toggle of GUI. And when I added that, now the F-sharp compiler uh, warns me about unheralded cases in the pattern matching. So it says that there's a problem that the toggle might not be handled, which is pretty cool, So, but because I don't want to run into runtime errors like that. And so let's fix that. I have already prepared before a snippet uh, for the toggle functionality. So uh, basically, all it's doing is it's iterating over the to-dos and checking whether the ID matches from the message. And if it matches, then basically it toggles the is completed flag. So we use a not, which is a function from bool to bool, and basically toggle the is completed field. So now, uh, when I click the checkbox, as you can see, it's marked as completed. And the changes should be persisted. So whenever I reload the page, uh, as you can see, uh, the changes have been uh, applied. And just to make a rehearsal on that, let's add uh, one more feature, uh, which will allow us to remove the to-do from the list. And for that purpose, I'll create a button just after the label. And the button will be of class name destroy. And this button should now appear whenever I move my mouse over a to-do. So there's a button uh, like a cross, red cross, which I can click, but nothing happens because I need still to subscribe to an event. So to fix that, let me subscribe to on click, on click event. And here I'll do pretty much the same that I did for the toggle. So I'll call destroy message with uh, to do ID and dispatch. And I need to create that destroy message. So let me go to my messages over here and again, new case destroy of GUID. And again, F-sharp compiler warns me about not covered case. So in this case, uh, I also have prepared a snippet for the destroy functionality. And all I'm doing here is uh, filtering out the to-dos that have the same ID as the one within the message. So now when I click the button, hopefully we can get rid of those uh, extra to-dos that we don't need. And again, the changes are persisted, so that's what we wanted. And that's what basically Elmish is all about. And uh, you might have recognized the, uh, the name is similar to Elm. So that's actually uh, the case because Elmish was inspired by the Elm language, and it follows the same architecture called uh, the Elm architecture. Or other people will call that a model view update pattern. And that's what. Uh, allows us, uh, in conjunction with Fable, to create nice 
uh, apps for the front end. And I think the, this uh, pattern is really simple to comprehend and to follow. So, so to sum up, uh, the SAFE acronym stands for four different technologies. Uh, S is for Saturn, which is a web server uh, on top of ASP.NET Core, and you write uh, your web server applications using F Sharp. Then uh, we have A for Azure, cloud provider from Microsoft. Uh, no real connection with F Sharp here, but we have that in the safe stack. Uh, then F for Fable, F Sharp to JavaScript compiler, which allows us to uh, compile F Sharp and run that code in the browser. And a library called Elmish, which follows the MVU pattern and uh, makes it possible to create uh, fancy applications in the front end. And what are the practical benefits of using SafeStack? So number one is uh, uh, the main theme of uh, the talk that uh, you can use just a single language to create whole application like end-to-end, -end, which is pretty cool. But you might be thinking that if you don't know F# -sharp, you need to learn that, which might be hard and uh, unpractical. But uh, trust me, after crossing the initial barrier, it's uh, really easy to use. And as a former c -sharp developer, I can now say that I am in a position where it's actually easier for me to read f -sharp code than a corresponding c -sharp code implementing the same functionality. Uh, so it's really worth it. And uh, if you want to try out, because also that's my goal of this uh, session, to encourage you to try out the uh, safe stack and uh, tell that it's awesome. Uh, so the template for SafeStack comes with plenty of options uh, for you to choose from, including the deployment options, as well as some uh, layouts that you can use initially. Uh, and uh, what's more, the development experience is really nice uh, thanks to the watch modes, both on the server and cl the client side. Uh, when I'm developing the application, I don't need to worry about recomp recompiling and rerunning the application. All is happening for me uh, automatically, which is uh, pretty cool. And uh, Fable, the f -sharp to JavaScript compiler, integrates nicely into existing JavaScript ecosystem. So we don't try to reinvent the wheel here, uh, but rather instead use already existing tools uh, in the huge JavaScript ecosystem. So if you want to integrate a library, that should be pretty easy. If you want to use some tool that's uh, based on JavaScript, you're, you're good to go. Uh, then Microsoft is involved into SafeStack by uh, regression testing new versions of .NET Core on safe stack uh, application examples. So you might be pretty sure that new version of .NET Core shouldn't spoil uh, your uh, safe application. And uh, lastly, there's community be behind safe stack and also some companies, pro uh, companies provide commercial support for that. So uh, it should be pretty safe to use safe. And what's more to safe? Uh, because we have single language for server and client, we can share code between those two. And let me actually uh, demonstrate to you how this looks like in practice. And as you might have noticed, there's a to-do type in client module, which looks exactly the same as the to-do type in the server. So what I can do is to grab this to-do type and move it to shared module over here. I just need to open the system namespace for the GUID. And uh, let me compile that. And now I'll go to the client and remove that type from here. And now it uses the to-do from the shared module. So basically, I removed uh, that and moved to a shared place. And both server and client side can use the same type. Uh, so you can think really of the shared module as a cross-compilation co solution. So uh, it can compile to .NET Core as well as to JavaScript. And the application still works as it should be, hopefully. Yeah. So to better demonstrate the concept, uh, another thing that you might have spotted is that uh, we use uh, like uh, literal strings for the URLs. So we might make some stupid typos. And uh, what we can do is, for example, define a module for the URLs. And here, I'll create a value for the todos, which will be API slash todos. And now I can use that in both in client and server side. So instead of this literal string over here, I'll call basically URL todos. 
And same story for this guy over here. And now I can do the same on the client side. So when I find the string, I'll use, instead of string literal, a uh, URL to do's. And there's one more occurrence over here. Right, so now uh, it's all in one place, so both server and client uh, knows about this change. I can even uh, change the URL to anything, and uh, that should basically work, hopefully. Haven't I tried that actually before? So let's check it. Uh, so just let's wait for that to compile. Yeah, still works. So uh, even if you, uh, well, basically that prevents you from making stupid mistakes, uh, and you don't need to repeat yourself, uh, which is pretty cool. You can also take this uh, idea a bit further, and uh, for example, implement some custom uh, validation logic, which will be uh, applicable for both client and server side. And uh, you can go on and think about uh, every possible code that can be cross-compiled to, uh, to ASP.NET Core and, uh, and uh, JavaScript or other targets, if necessary, also. OK, so this was sharing code. Uh, then, uh, because we're using existing, uh, we're integrating nicely with JavaScript for Fable, we can use awesome tools like, for example, this one, Remote DevTools Debugger, uh, which basically, uh, this is like the things, f I think it was invented for the React Plus Redux uh, tech stack, uh, but it allows you basically to debug your application like in a time travel uh, history uh, manner, so you can uh, go step by step through each message and see what, how your application is behaving. Uh, so that's pretty cool. We have support for full stack debugging in Visual Studio Code, uh, so you can set breakpoints in both server and client side and uh, hit those breakpoints whenever your application is running. Uh, if you want, you can take the uh, rendering of React to server side. So Node.js has this capability of server side rendering for React, but here we're basically doing the, the same, but uh, in .NET Core, which is much faster than the Node.js corresponding uh, functionality. Uh, what's more, SafeStack appeared recently on Fotworks technology radar. So uh, let me refresh that. Uh, here it is. So people are uh, spotting this stack. Uh, I was hoping that I could see that on the IHS uh, technology stack, but apparently for now there is just F sharp. So hopefully that can hopefully that can change soon. Uh, okay. And so what's more, we have a number of podcasts and events uh, appearances that are available at this uh, URL over here. And to conclude, some more resources that we have uh, thorough uh, documentation. There are some uh, uh, deep dive demos and uh, slides and source code for this presentation are all on online. So you can grab the source code and uh, the URLs if you like for reference. And I think that's it pretty much for, for, for today. I have some F sharp and safe stickers over here. So uh, if you're interested, uh, please uh, talk to me and uh, you'll, I'll give you one. And, uh, well, I can say thank you uh, if we have time for questions. And I can take some. Do we have time for questions? Okay. Okay, so the question is how to interrupt from Fable with JavaScript. And uh, the story here is that you can use either some of the existing bindings. So to call a JavaScript, a JavaScript library from Fable, you need to have bindings for uh, F-sharp. And there is already uh, some, uh, some most uh, known JavaScript libraries will have the F-sharp Fable bindings. But if there's none, it's quite easy to create your own bindings. So you can take an F-sharp, uh, sorry, and JavaScript library, take a look at the functions that you want to use, and create type signatures for those. Uh, and it's uh, just like that. Uh, well, obviously, a couple of other things to take into consideration, but it's pretty easy, uh, the integration story here. Uh, 
so the question was, uh, are there any tools to transpile TypeScript to F Sharp? Uh, and the answer is yes, and actually that's uh, also uh, regarding the previous questions. So there's also so TypeScript have th this concept of uh, TypeScript uh, definitions. I think that's what it's called. And it's a project called uh, TS to Fable, which stands for TypeScript to Fable. So it takes TypeScript bindings and try to create F# -sharp bindings for that. Uh, but the thing is uh, that it might not work in all cases because there are some uh, types in uh, TypeScript that don't have a one to one mapping to F# -sharp. so it will it will work in uh, most cases but in some more advanced scenarios it might not work and in that case you need to create your own bindings yep okay so the question the, so the question is how do you position safe stack compared to blazor and uh, I haven't used Blazor myself. Uh, I, all I know about Blazor is that uh, you use C Sharp for, uh, for creating the, the application that can compile, uh, I believe, to WebAssembly. But there's some more uh, details to that, that there's uh, this uh, mono, uh, which I'm not exactly sure how it works. But the key point here is that uh, it's still like uh, uh, the web assembly is still like in a very early phase. So uh, here we are basically using JavaScript, which has like huge ecosystem right now, and uh, web assembly is still on its uh, very early days. So uh, I think this is the key point to take into consideration if you were to choose between these uh, technologies. Okay, so if anyone wants to, okay. So, uh, for example, mine, <laughs> uh, we use Fable. We're not using uh, Saturn on the server side, but we use uh, Fable, and we also use the uh, concept of sharing code. So we will take some code that is compiled to, from F# -sharp to JavaScript, and we'll compile that code also to uh, F# -sharp console application running on .NET Core. And uh, yeah, so we will use Fable. Uh, there are companies across the world that are using uh, SafeStack for their application. I know of companies in uh, US, in uh, Germany, uh, UK, Belgium. So there are some companies using that in their production applications. Okay, so if you have any more questions, you can grab me uh, after the session somewhere. I'll be here uh, hanging around. So thanks again for listening to my talk and Take care. <laughs> Thank you.